Dark and damp and deep, the earth gives up its secrets. Scraps of metal, furls of plastic, rubble and pebbles and clay. There among them lie the shards of coal, black and glistening. Far in the distance, the land gives way to the riverbank, a rich blur of green where weekday fishermen sit silently waiting. But the space between is raw and empty, just small flocks of birds, two horses grazing. Rain speckles the soil, mounds of earth, the gaping pits, the stationary diggers. This is all that is left of Orgreave Open Cast Mine. In the June of 1984, at the height of the miners' strike, the National Union of Mine Workers rallied some 6,000 picketers to this corner of Yorkshire, intending to blockade the coking plant and perhaps force its temporary closure. In response, the police sent somewhere between four and 8,000 officers, 50 mounted police and 58 police dogs. The events of that afternoon were violent and ferocious and long disputed. The horses are the most feared weapon in the police armoury on the picket line, and they're very effective. In its aftermath, 95 picketers were charged, although of the trials that were brought, all collapsed, and South Yorkshire Police later awarded £425,000 in compensation to 39 pickets. It reminded me of rocks drift with all them Zulus, and I'm looking at them bobbies all dressed in black. Couldn't believe it. By the, they were ready for us. Now there are no mines, and the local miners' club sits empty. These days, no one can afford to drink anywhere but home. Orgreave ceased operation in 2005, its shallow seams having run dry after the harvesting of five million tonnes of coal. Today it is a brownfield site. They are draining the land, making way for three and a half thousand new homes, for offices and leisure lakes. Subduing the earth, smoothing it down, willing it to forget all that it saw.